What's up everyone? So this is day two of expressing gratitude to people who have really shaped my life. And so today my gratitude goes out to a man by the name of Clive Calvert. Clive Calvert, thank you so much for the influence that you've had in my life and how you have shaped who I am uh, in so many ways. So my interactions with Clive was during a small stint of time uh, when I was still in high school. And Clive Calver uh, was the president at the time of World Relief, which uh, is a organization, a Christian organization that helps churches around the world help poor people. So Clive, I remember seeing Clive speak in front of, you know, thousands and thousands of people and command so much authority um, speak with so much charisma, so much conviction, and just move an audience. And he was, you know, definitely a mover and shaker in the in Christendom. I mean, the guy had a lot of influence. And then he was leading this organization, World Relief, and of course that was no small organization, and and uh, at the time doing incredible things around the world. So um, I was you know, impressed with him from afar, but then I actually got to interact with him a little bit more closely and, uh, and meet him and talk with him. And the thing about Clive that was amazing to me is that, you know, he had three children, um, one of which was my age and then two, uh, two older kids at, at the time. I was like, you know, 16, 17 years old, whatever. And him and his wife, Ruth, were traveling around the world to some of the poorest countries in Africa um, to help to serve, to minister, you know, <clears throat> and he's like, you know, I mean, he's not like a young gun who's got nothing to lose. He has a family and they would go into like these, you know, countries like Sierra Leone. And, uh, I remember Clive telling me one time when he was out ministering to poor people, they, you know, some, some, uh, somebody, I don't know who they were, like, uh, maybe it was the army or, or police or, or who knows, stuck an AK-47 up his nose, um, you know, he had constantly put himself in harm's way to complete the mission um, that God had called him to. So here I am watching this guy who's leading a thriving organization uh, who can just go around and speak from church to church. People love listening to this guy. And yet he's also going into these countries around the world where it's so dangerous. And when I spoke with Clive, and I actually had a chance to like hear a little bit more of his story and talk and interact with him, um, you know, Clive just inspired me because of his faith. He was such a dreamer. Like in his earlier days before he came to America, uh, he got in a, like a car with his wife, and they just drove around England um, everywhere they go, just living by faith, telling people about God and about Jesus. And, uh, you know, never had a plan B, just got in the car and, and left. And then right to the present when I met him, he was still traveling the world, doing all these incredible things, all through faith, you know. But he was very successful, and he could have very much just stayed in his comfort zone. Um, but instead, he had this, like, compassion and drive to help the poor. So, thanks to Clive Calver, who inspired me at such a you know, impressionable age, to just dream so big and yet still cultivate a heart for the disenfranchised and the poor and the people who were in need. And that was Clive Calvert. Massive, big thinker, dreamer, you know? This guy was like partners with Billy Graham, I think, at some stint in his life. I mean, he did incredible things, authored like 20 books, and yet never lost sight of the small and the people in need. What a balance, what an awesome juxtaposition to have a visionary, a dreamer, and yet somebody who is so in tune with humanity. Man, thank you, Clive Calvert. Thank you for when you became a grown-up, you didn't lose your passion, you didn't lose your dreamer side of you, you kept on going, and you, you channeled it into positivity for the kingdom of God, to help the poor, to help those in need. And uh, here I am thinking about you 20 years later, and I wouldn't be the man today if I didn't have your example. It shapes me um, even to the present day. I think many times about my times of interaction with you, and I just want to say thank you. All right, be back tomorrow for another shout-out. Peace.